Welcome to the Reform Balance Podcast with me, Albert Esvander. Here we talk about health science and mindset tips with the goal of inspiring you to have a balanced approach to holistic wellness. Today, I will be your host while we sit down with Dr. Remy Shanker and discuss conscious eating. Our guest, Dr. Remy Shanker, currently works at New York University Abu Dhabi as the wellness specialist. She is a medically qualified doctor and nutritionist holding an MBBS, MSc in Dietetics and Applied Nutrition. Dr. Remy has worked with various multinational wellness companies across the UAE in the last 10 years, with a proven track record of creating and implementing wellness initiatives that uplift the scope of employee and community wellness. Dr. Remy is also a qualified chef and holds a diploma in culinary arts from the International Center for Culinary Arts, Dubai, and worked as part of a startup team as a nutrition chef in a renowned restaurant in Dubai. I'm excited to introduce to you Dr. Remy. Thank you so much for being here. I'd love for you to share your story on what motivated you to become a doctor and nutritionist. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, So my journey of embracing the idea of holistic balance came relatively around the time I graduated from med school. I had always been fascinated with how the first line of treatment for most non-communicable diseases is lifestyle management. But in traditional medicine, we rarely touch upon the breadth of the knowledge with what entails lifestyle management. Of course, we learn the physiological and biochemical interactions and implications with each condition, but the functionality is often left wide open to interpretation. So this is why to expand my horizons toward a much functional approach with medicine, I pursued my master's in dietetics and applied nutrition. And with that knowledge combined, I was able to discover a whole new paradigm in wellness that is heuristic and proactive rather than just being reactive. Great, great journey and realizations you've had along the way. So help us understand and maybe give us a little bit of background with how you serve clients, we could all use your help, especially during this unique time. Yeah, so I would define my role as being able to provide simple, real and holistic resources to help individuals and the community alike champion a fulfilling and healthy life. I have been part of many such corporate wellness initiatives with MNCs, SMEs, educational institutions, and government entities across the region here in the UAE. The workshops and sessions that I conduct help attendees to really think about what their wellness means to them. So when we say one must lead a balanced lifestyle, as practical as that advice may be in a dynamic environment as in this region, It opens up a can of worms, which is usually synonymous with restrictive eating patterns, um, guilt, a lack of self-love, a disordered relationship with food and oneself. These sessions or wellness programs are purely designed to empower attendees to define what balance means to them and to delve deeper into taking care of the three homes we actually spend much of our time in our mind, our body, and our environment. Yeah, that's so true. Leading a truly balanced lifestyle can be a tricky thing to navigate. So thank you for providing such a service. Your recent article on conscious eating was a fantastic take on how the mind plays a role in nutrition. For those who haven't read your piece yet, which by the way, a link to it will be given in the description box of the podcast, could you tell us what is conscious or mindful eating and why it is important? Certainly. So conscious or mindful eating is simply being in tune with the mind, body, and environment, which enables us to make informed, fulfilling choices. So essentially, it entails understanding, accepting, and loving our whole self. We all have a shadow or an alter ego lurking within us, 
much like the uh, fictitious shoulder devil we often see on television. The shadow stems from a subconscious conditioning during childhood, awakens during puberty, and then continues to morph as we age. So basically, it is shaped by our experiences and environment, and is often the dark side we scurry away from when we do get a glimpse of it. Our conscious ego, on the other hand, is what we often depend upon for logical reasoning and which brings forth the intellectual decisions. Now, a completely realized individual is able to unleash the power of their unique shadow and the conscious ego to define what balance truly means to their core being. So essentially, mindfulness is a state of submerging your senses into the experience. When it comes to mindful eating, it is about making you a priority and working with both of these egos to indulge in cravings fully cognizant of the satiation, knowing that nourishment is not just a physiological uh, act, but also transcends to how our mind perceives it. Uh, backtracking and reflecting upon the nostalgia and experiences that shape and condition our preferences and to also eat while knowing that food is not just a fuel source, but an intricate coding mechanism for every cell in our body. Mm, powerful, powerful information. Okay, so can we, what can we do to get these types of benefits? What skills or habits should we be focusing on or strengthening to leverage the most of conscious eating? Well, I think it all comes down to understanding our authentic self. So instinctually, we would rather find solace in other mechanisms to cope with than facing our true selves, just for the fear of discovering that it may not actually match up to the conjured perception we do have about ourselves. So this is where shadow and ego work come into play. Embracing our unique shadow and understanding the factors that tame and ignite it steers us towards holistic eating pattern and our authentic self. So to begin with, there is a two-step approach. The first step is to name our alter ego or shadow within us. Now, as funny as that may sound, by assigning it an entity, we actually acknowledge its existence and lay the groundwork for working with it. The next step would be to pause and then check in with ourselves with these three simple questions. So number one, which emotion are you feeding currently? Two, why are you making, uh, what, why is it making you react this way? And three, if or how the particular food or drink will actually help ease the contention you are facing in the moment. So these questions could be a habitual dialogue to have with ourselves with all our meals, but by this, I certainly don't mean one should start stressing about what to eat, but simply starting off with a two-step approach as this could bring accountability for our emotions and actions, thus calling upon the conscious ego Working with the two egos and creating a symbiotic relation between them is the holy grail of mindfulness, which eventually then starts running on autopilot. Okay, so great practical steps. With the new normal, what is your take on people listening who live in high urbanized areas, particularly in the UAE, to begin forming these habits during their busy lives? I can imagine these people are those hustlers who often eat while working. Any tips they can incorporate into their day-to-day -day, day -day lives? Yeah, I think with the way we work now in the new normal, it is important that we take the time to start off our morning with the right intentions. So in this case, affirmations play a very big role in setting the tone for the day and are so effective because they take less than 10 minutes. So especially for hustlers, just taking a minute or two when we wake up to think about what you are going to eat for the day helps you plan and set uh, that goal, thereby engaging the prefrontal cortex of the brain and the conscious ego. 
So about 80 to 85% of the time, one tends to follow with the intention, but it is very important that in the 15 to 20% of the times when we do bungle, to be forgiving and engage with our shadow ego. So we may be able to create that symbiotic relationship between the egos and get back on track. So if we have five minutes to check our phones for updates, we certainly have five minutes for an affirmation that will help hone our mindfulness and is so quintessential to our self-care routine. Mm -hmm. Nicely explained. We can all make time no matter how busy we think we are. So let's switch gears now from the conscious eating to health in general. With over a decade of experience in Dubai, certainly there are some problems that patients come to you with that are common that you have found in your practice. Myself and our listeners would appreciate knowing what are some common patterns arising from this multicultural place and what do you give as recommendations that we can apply in our day to day lives. Any common myths or misconceptions people have surrounding health. Yeah, so one of the common misconceptions or possibly a path less thought about in wellness is self-care. So to put that in perspective, self-care is a practice of actively preserving and improving one's well-being and happiness. So it is common um, it, to have that misconception that self-care is something that is necessary only in times of stress. Now, it's especially in these unprecedented times, when we get into the practice to devote our time to self-care routines, we become pro proactive in improving focus in reducing stress and also preventing burnout. You may already practice self-care, but may not call it the same. For example, taking time to watch a movie, reading your favorite book, decorating your home, listening to music, eating a nourishing meal, staying physically active, setting tasks and reminders for the day, taking breaks, staying hydrated, journaling your thoughts, all are example of what are examples of what self-care could mean. Now these routines not only engage with the conscious ego, with focus, with planning and conscious enjoyment, but even with the shadow ego, by shaping it with experience and the environment we subject ourselves to. So essentially, this is how we are able to reclaim and uplift our wellness from daily stressors and function at a slightly more higher level. Another misconception or a folly I do see very often with one's wellness journey is the dependency on the scale, the weighing scale that is. So being constantly obsessed with the number on the scale gradually sets one in a spiral to ultimately plummet. I think we've become accustomed to defining our worth with the number on the scale rather than measuring our success with our accomplishments, with our ability to hone our mindfulness, to be kind and forgiving to ourselves as we would with others and to really truly love and accept our whole self. Now, admittedly, knowing your body fat percentage, muscle mass, water percentage, the distribution, all hold value in certain journeys toward health. But then running the race of standards set by an archaic beauty industry is not just debilitating to one's physical wellness, but here's where we usher in a cobweb of unstable egos. Yeah, just great information and um, pitfalls to be aware of and, and reminded of for no matter what stage of the wellness journey we're all on. Uh, so you heard it here. Okay, so last question. If there are three must-have foods you could recommend to people for sustained healthy eating, what would those be? Okay, so I believe we must enjoy a wide array of foods without having to follow rules and really hone our ability to be in sync with what happens around and within us. So instead, I would say there are three food guiding principles to define what balance could be for each one. So firstly, 
enjoying a wide variety of foods, as I'd mentioned earlier, and then reflecting upon why you enjoy them. So knowing when that love began with the food helps you identify that initial experience and also the yearning we have uh, toward navigating to it at all times. So all of these help in fine tuning our mindfulness. Secondly, recognizing which foods actually aid with your digestion. So for every signal the brain sends for digestion and motility, the gut actually sends nine more that affect our mood and hormones. So it is important to understand that gut-brain axis that primarily revolves around millions of bacteria that reside in our colon. Now, when the flora is happy, the body thrives. So ill gut health tends to present with symptoms like skin problems, mood swings, lethargy, menstrual issues, um, bloating, ill bowel health, etc. So it is advisable to identify the foods causing such symptoms with mindfulness and then eliminate and introduce the foods in smaller quantities to help restore the lost balance in our second brain, which is the gut. And lastly, understanding hormones. So it is a common misconception, again, that hormones are related to only the female identifying population. In this region, there is a huge predilection for a condition called estrogen dominance, uh, which is amongst the male identifying population given the rise in lifestyle diseases. So common indicators of hormonal imbalance uh, could be issues with sleep, with focus, metabolism, uh, disproportionate body fat distribution, uh, skin problems, and uh, amongst the female identifying population, the more obvious menstrual issues. So having a hormonal panel done in these cases helps ascertain appropriate lifestyle modifications. So instead of three must-have foods, these would be my three food guiding principles, I would say, that are more important. Thank you for clarifying. It's amazing when we pay attention how much our bodies are constantly telling us about the state of our health. So before our conversation ends, where can people go to find more of you, your work, or get in touch with you for appointments? Yeah, so um, you can definitely see my latest work and learn a little bit more about me or feel free to visit me on my website, which is www.drremy.com. That is dr com. You may even follow me on Instagram at drremy underscore Shankar and LinkedIn, which would be Dr. Remy Shankar. Um, you can even feel free to write to me at me at dr-remy.com to inquire about my corporate wellness programming, which are all free of cost as part of my social responsibility for the community. So thank you for having me. And I love the work and content that and the content that Reform Balance puts out on health and wellness. It's always a pleasure to work with you. Yeah, and thank you for being on the podcast today, Dr. Remy. It's always a pleasure working with you and hearing um, your expert advice. For that Dr. Remy provided are going to be in the show notes, so be sure to visit www.reformbalance.com slash podcast for these notes and the actual article Dr. Remy provided on this subject. Until next time, signing off.